Good morning. I thought you were going to do it. I did. But I heard you. Good morning. (laughs) I'm getting really good at that. I don't know why that cracks me up. All right, I feel guys. like you know those puppets when they have the puppets next to you and you just oh yeah the ventriloquist the ventriloquist yeah mm-hmm. uh, we are on key number two oh yeah but it's our third day it's our third day because the first one was the introduction mm-hmm. guys this is part three mm-hmm. of how to hear God's voice key number two. So I said it yesterday, I'll say it again. The first key that we spoke about yesterday was spontaneous, the spontaneous voice of God. Number two was, is today, is to quiet yourself. Number three is gonna be vision, that's tomorrow. And then there's journal. So if you have not, if you're just jumping into this video for the first time, I suggest to better understand what we're talking about go to our channel and go to the previous videos on this series and also listen to the sermon titled dethrone the mind and um, that way you'll fall in line uh, as to where we're at right now today we are we're going to talk about key number two which is quiet yourself uh, i just want to say hello to everybody out there we don't want to just not, not acknowledge you guys and get straight it's just i'm really excited because what we're going to talk about today is going to be a powerhouse uh, and um, and I don't want to sound like a car salesman, but it is going to be a good one, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. And uh, it's daytime. We're not tired. We're wide awake. We're actually on our way to Modesto in a little bit. But for you, it's it's a morning. If you're watching this morning in the morning time, yeah. Uh, so quieting yourself. Just a recap, guys. Um, God speaks to us in a spontaneous voice. We have three voices that speak to us, our own mind, God, and the enemy. And yesterday's video really covers how to distinguish those things. But now here's the next thing a lot of people might ask. Okay, I want to hear God's voice, but how do I quiet myself in this loud, fast, busy world? Because, I mean, now in a day and age where husband and wife's work and people are going here nobody even sits at the table anymore everybody's to eat in a rush all the time. yeah everybody's in the rush all the time so it's a, it's a very trying time to quiet yourself and so we want to just do a whole video on how to quiet yourself uh, i want to start off with with a few verses the first one is psalm 46 10 and that psalm says be still and know that i am the lord that over there. That's what I was reading it from. <laughs> be still. So if somebody's saying, well, how do you know, why do you quiet yourself? Where do you get that from? Is that biblical? Heck yeah, it's biblical. Because in Psalm it says, be still and know that I'm Lord. God is saying, be still, like calm down, slow down, mm-hmm. hit the brakes. Mm-hmm. You know, also in Psalm 62, verses 1 and verse 5, I'll read it right here. Uh, Psalm 62, 1 says, truly my soul silently waits for God. So even the psalmist, as he's writing it, uh, King David wrote this, yeah. and he says, "My soul silently waits for God. For Him comes, from Him comes my salvation. He is, He only is my rock and my salvation. My, what am I doing? Are you tongue twisted? Yeah. Let's start over. <laughs> Truly, my soul silently waits for God. From Him comes my salvation." He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. And then, so that again says that he silently waits, his soul waits. So verse 5, it says, again, my soul waits silently for God alone. So these are verses, scripture, that is is a scriptural foundation that God wants us to quiet ourselves. Mm -hmm. So in order to to hear that spontaneous voice, see, God will not have a shouting match with our problems. Yeah. He would not have a shouting match. He's a still small voice, you know? And, and um, so these, these three verses show you that. Now, another thing in quieting yourself is you can't hear God if you're always in a rush. Yeah. 
like, oh, I'm going to give a five minute prayer. And you just throw some suggestions to him, throw some needs that you have, and then just get about your day and be like, yeah, I spent time with God. Did you really? You know, is that what, what spending time with God is? Is that what it's come down to is, is, you know, you read off a list of, so you're not going to be able to hear that spontaneous voice. You have to quiet yourself. Uh, have you ever had a, and we've both done this to each other, when we ever trying to have a conversation and you're on the phone or I'm on the phone, it's kind of rude. Yeah, it is. You know, and, and when you have a conversation with somebody, you want to, you meet an old friend, you haven't seen them in a long time, and the whole time you're on your phone as they're talking to you and telling you what their life has been like, especially if they've been going through some hard times and you're just checking your Facebook. You know, and in a sense, that's what we're doing to God. How can you truly hear the person sitting across from you if you're on your phone or distracted, much more or less a spontaneous, still small voice in, in your heart? Or you go to dinner to get away to get away because you, you, you tell that person that's special to you, you know, we need some time together because we haven't, we haven't really spent much time together. And then you get away because you feel that you need that communication, but then you get away and you go. Yeah. And when you're away, you're on your phone. Yeah. And you're not spending that quality time, you know, and the whole purpose was to get away so that you yeah. can be able to spend that time together mm -hmm. you know you know the it wasn't until maybe t a week or two ago i think it was a conversation i was having with you that i had said in all honesty guys i love people that come and, and come to the house of rest or whatnot but i realized remember and you're gonna remember when i said this i said there's some people that i have not had a real conversation with i realized because i like joking a lot mm -hmm. i like messi messing around a lot but, like, there's people, like, for instance, uh, Brother Tony, ALG. Oh, man, we joke and crack up, but there's times that we just talk. Yeah. There's times where I'm upset at him, and I'm just like, man, I'm, I'm mad at you, man, and I just got to let you know what's on my heart. <laughs> and there's times he's like, you know, man, dude, you let me down. I, I need you to know that when you did that, that hurt me. And so you get, we get to have fun and joke around, but there's times we really, really talk. Or we really communicate, yeah. yeah. And then I realized there's some people at the church, and I want this to change, I have not had a real conversation with them. We joke, we laugh, we shake hands, how are you doing? I'm blessed, I'm doing great. But I've never had them share their heart with me. And I've never, I realized, man, I've known you for a year and everything has been surfacy. Yeah. Now, I'm not bringing that up to, to bring conviction on anyone at the church, I'm bringing that as an example is you can be with the Lord for 10 years, and what if the whole time it was just surfacy? Yeah. You know, and, and that's, see, we need to learn to quiet ourselves so we can hear that spontaneous key number one, the spontaneous voice of God that lights upon our heart. I don't want to have a surfacy relationship with God. That's, why? What, what's the... Why even serve him then? And, and you know, sometimes it takes, it takes a little time too. Sometimes you gotta set, you gotta set the environment, you gotta set that mood, you gotta be able to set that. And sometimes like, I'll wake up super early before all you guys and I'll put worship music on in here. Have you noticed that I do that? Like, How would I notice I'm asleep? Well, yeah, you're asleep. But I'll wake up and you, even before you're awake though, you'll wake up and you'll wake up to worship music being on. Mm -hmm. And the whole house will have worship music and that's because I've already had it on. But I'll have it on throughout the day. And there's moments where I'll just leave it playing. And there'll be that moment, that one song where God will just start speaking to me. Mm -hmm. And it'll just, boom, that's it. That's all it took was the words from that one song that it'll just it'll just grab my attention and it'll just break me and that's all it took you know because sometimes it has to set that mood and and god will yeah. just speak to you through something and mm -hmm. he'll he'll stand me still for that moment but sometimes we have to set up that environment too yeah and we have to be able to allow ourselves to be ushered into his presence and you you taught me that too that mm -hmm. we have to be ushered into his presence not ushering him into the presence because yeah. he's already there 
but we have to be ushered into his presence. And that's the beautiful thing though, because we have to set the environment sometimes and allow ourselves to stand still. Yeah. And I do that. And mm -hmm. it's such a beautiful feeling to be able to do that. You know, a lot, I, I'm a firm believer, and maybe I'm wrong. I've never been a club kind of guy, even when I was serving, not serving God. Um, it always seemed very shallow to me. Is because it's like when you're not very sure of yourself and you don't really want somebody to get close to you, what better thing than go to a nightclub where everything has to be just visual and you kind of yell things to each other over the music, but you don't really get to know that person. And it's like, in the same sense, we fill ourselves up with noise. To It's, like, it's almost like we really don't want to hear from God. Mm -hmm. But here we're talking about quieting ourselves. I think we can go to a church that's really loud so we don't have to get to know people or know God. And people think like, oh man, it's popping at that church. Uh, no, really, honestly, you just like the loudness because we fill ourselves up with noise on purpose because a lot of times we don't want to deal with ourselves. You think so? Yeah, not always, not always, because there's time of celebration. You know, we were just talking about this. Maybe you're not getting what I'm saying. Maybe I'm not. Is Maybe this? I need to okay. emphasize a little bit better or explain it a little bit better because okay. I'm not understanding. Let me say this. When I remember people that were not serving God, mm -hmm. they always had to be around friends. If the friends weren't around, they had to be blasting music, just worldly music. They had to have noise, they had to have alcohol, they had to have something happening, they had to have drama. They had to, it's like they always could never quiet themselves. And everything was frantic. I'm not talking about worship time, because we're gonna hit that right now. Okay. Okay. I'm talking about noise. There's always noise, like the TV's always blaring, kids are always screaming. It's just, our world is Chaos. filled with noise. Chaos. Chaos. You get okay. what I'm saying now? Okay. So it gets so much to the fact that everything is surfacy. There's no deepness. There's no, there's no, there's no deep things of God. Okay. So you just, you just. That make better sense? Yeah. You yeah. clarified it for me because I, I got it confused as to, are you talking about worship time? Or are no, you talking no. about. Okay. Yeah. Because there has to be a time of separation. Mm -hmm. There has to be that time of quietness because how could God speak to you if you don't have that time of separation and that time of quietness? You have to have that. Like, isn't there times when we talk and if it's just surfacey stuff, we could do it while the TV's playing? Yeah. But if it's serious, I'm like, shut the TV off. We yeah. need to talk there's about this. There's times in here when everything is yeah. quiet and it's just you and me and there's nothing, not even the sounds of the kids in here. And we, we could be in here for hours and talking. Yeah because it's it's important and, and even if it's just talking of the Lord we can sit here and talk about God for two hours yeah. and that's all we're talking about you now know? Um, another biblical example many times read the Gospels Jesus would separate from the crowd yes and he would go to a lonely place to pray yes and that's now, important. Jesus was our example he was showing us how to do this thing how to walk this thing out and many times he would separate himself even from the Apostles mm -hmm and say, I'm gonna go and I need some time to pray. So remember, we're talking about quieting ourselves. So in the middle of quieting ourselves, there's two things that are loud. There's external external things that are loud, and there's e in, internal, internal things that are loud. So let's talk about the external stuff first. Um, a lot of times, believe it or not, if you unless you really think about it, um, let's say bills. <laughs> Oh man, bills can yell in your ear all day long. Yeah, they can. And here's the thing, they never go away because every month you have new bills. So what happens is, oh, I'm sorry, external stuff, things you got to do, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's say you, you got a whole thing, a list of things that you got to do today. You know, because sometimes I do that. If, if I allow things like that, that, um, that I got to do get in the way of my riding my bike or going to the gym, then I will never ride my bike or never go to the gym because the list is never ending of things that have to be done. So you got to prioritize, you know? So we have to quiet that stuff. It's like, it's like brain, I'm going to spend 20 minutes with God. You have the rest of the 23 hours and 40 minutes of this day. But for this time and this moment, you gotta, if you got to shut your kids out, if you got to go to your room, if you got to tell your kids, hey, 
I'm going to be in my room for 30 minutes. If you have kids, if you have a spouse, have them help you. If you have whatever it is, shut your phone off, put it on silent. You know, just you can't go into this quiet time with God with your phone ringer on next to you with Facebook open. It's it's the it's prioritizing, you know, it's just like us doing these these um these videos, these yeah. devotionals. You know, our boys know the moment our boys hear us actually talking here, everything gets shut down or we send them a text recording, just the word, whatever it be. Mm -hmm. They know that it is a priority in this home. They know how important it is um, because they know the important it is for us to do these videos because yeah. they, they know that it's reaching out to many people everything gets shut down yeah. there's no movement there's yeah. nothing going on in this Ex house. yeah external noise you have you have the control of that yeah shut the tv off you know shut that stuff off turn off your phone or, or put it on silent shut it down leave another room put it face down whatever don't let that distract you the bills and the things that you have to do the the chores you got to do that day it can wait 20 minutes it can you know and so you have to just quiet yourself in that moment and say, this time is for God. So, and, and, and sometimes, you know, it makes me, it, that's, that's, I think maybe that's where I kind of have a problem. I and mean, it makes me question. It's like why, maybe why people or we have problems in, in being able to say no to people or not being able to prioritize the things or finding our time to be able to commit to the things of God, you know? Yeah. It it's hard for me because you know, when we have a job, we go to our job. You know, when we have when we send our kids to school, we send our kids to school because it's the law to send our kids to school or not that parents would get arrested, you know, or mm -hmm. and we go to work every day because we need to pay our bills, right, and everything. So those are things that we have to do. So why can't we commit to the same things of, of God, you know? Yeah. And why can't we take the time and be fully committed? to the things of God and, and give him time. Well, put it this way. We'd be homeless if we didn't commit to a job for eight hours a day. Yeah. So if you can commit to a job for eight hours, something that's temporal, because really, I mean, that's just, you know, it's a temporary thing. We can't commit 20 minutes to the Lord. You know, we have to learn to put things to the side, like you're saying, you know. And so we have to shut out all that external stuff. Yeah. Now, the next one is, I think, harder, though, is the internal noise. Yeah. That right there, and it's going to go into the next point, but internal noise, and I've kind of tapped on it, like the bills, the problems, the situations you're in, <clears throat> that stuff screams in our ears all day long. The moment I pay my phone bill, I know the next bill's coming and I'm already freaking out about it. Yeah. The minute we pay our rent, I'm like, the we next, made the it. Next month is so then already. the countdown just starts again for the next month's yeah. rent. And that stuff, as, as the days go closer and closer to the first, it screams louder and louder, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, and, some, and it's multiple bills. It's, it's the car payment, the insurance, the, the rent, the the Wi-Fi, the, the, the food and the, the fridge, groceries, and all of it Pies starts. Up. And here's what's crazy is each one tries to out scream each other. And it's just roaring by the time. And, and, it's, and you're like, I'm, and I'm supposed to quiet myself, you know, and um, you're going to have to learn to do this. You're going to have to learn to shut that stuff out, command that stuff to stay quiet and, and basically tell your mind, OK, brain, listen, um, I know this stuff ain't going to go away, but in 20 minutes, it's still going to be there. 20 minutes are going to make a difference. So shut your mind, shut your mouth. I need to spend time with God and quiet myself. You know, you, you got to do it. Well, if we don't, then, then we begin idolizing those things, right? Is that what happens? Yeah, yeah. You know, because those things start to overtake our lives, and mm -hmm. that's, that's not good. Yeah, so... Um, I wanted to use a biblical example of this. Um, there's a prophet, Elisha, and Elisha, uh, a, the king of Israel wanted advice from him. Mm -hmm. But the king of Israel was not worshiping God. 
So Elisha was like, I don't want to give you no, nothing from God because you aren't obeying God, so why should you get advice from God, basically? But basically they forced him in this position where Elisha was standing before the king and the king was saying, I need you to prophesy. I need you to tell me what to do because this army is coming against us and I need you to talk to God. I need direction. You know, and this is uh, 2 Kings 3.15. 2 Kings 3.15, Old Testament. And it's interesting what it says here. Okay, it says this. 2 Kings 3.15. So look at what, what the prophet Elisha says. Actually, I'll, re I'll read from 14. And Elisha said, he's talking to the king. He says, as the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand, I surely were... Where I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, I would not look at you nor see you. He couldn't stand that king because that king, that king was worshiping other gods, other idols. And he's like, man, if it wasn't for King Jehoshaphat, he was, I, I wouldn't even be looking at you. But then he says this, this is what's interesting. Verse 15, he goes, but now bring me a musician. Then it happened when the musician played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. This prophet, in order for him to hear God, he had to shut down the noise. He had to shut, there's armies around him, the kings around him, all this chaos is around him. And he had to find that quiet place. And he says, okay, I'll give you a word from the Lord. Have the musician play. Which brings me into, into this. Remember what I was talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. Our brains our left side of our brain is the analytical side. If you do math, you're using the left side of your brain. If you are writing something, you're using the left side of your brain. Everything is analytical on the left side of your brain. On the right side, it's, it's more intuition. It's, um, put it this way, I think this makes creative. it... Creative. Creative, yeah, yeah, side. yeah the creative side. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a musician, a singer, a rapper, a painter, an artist, um, creative thinking anything yeah. like that you're using the right side of your brain now this is really hard because some people we're all wired different some are very analytically thinking they, they have to see things in lists and in graphs and it has to make sense mm -hmm. to them because they see it through the left side of their brain but here's the problem is that the right side of the brain is, is the intuition the arts and all that stuff so it's easier for that person to hear from God. Yeah. You know, so what happens if somebody, maybe you're watching this, you're a very analytical type of person. Maybe Elisha was an analytical person. So in order for him to quiet himself, he has to do something that is right-brained. In other words, he says, play some music. Yeah. I need some music to activate that right side, my creative side of my brain, so then I can tune into that flow of God speaking, yeah. you know, and it just makes, what? Is that our gardeners? Yeah. At this time? Nice. <laughs> we'll be back. We're back. If you can hear it, they're a little further now. They were in the front door earlier, so mm -hmm. it's super loud. Um, but I, I wanted to start off where where I was, and I was talking about the left and the right brain. So the right brain is, is like intuition, in the camera. intuition, arts, music, even cycling. And I realized that, is that loud? Just just keep talking, they can hear you. I don't know if they can hear over that. That sounds like there's a helicopter on top of our house. <laughs> what if there is a helicopter? They'll be literally gone like in one minute. That's a long, that's a, one minute is long in, in the YouTube world. See? Yeah. So. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. All right. Let's try this again. Um, the right brain is where things just flow. Now, every single person usually nobody's hard line right brain or left brain we're all usually kind of in the center but we lean toward one way or another mm -hmm. you know 
I'm pretty safe to say I probably lean toward the right because I, I was a rapper. I produce music. I paint. Um, stuff that's art artistic. So it's probably easier for me um, pro to to hear the voice of God because I can switch to that right side. Yeah. You know, and, and oh, a good way to know if you are left or right is um, if you if you read a book, can you visualize it? Mm. Because me, I I fall right into a novel or a book. I start seeing, I me, start seeing it like a me movie. Me too. Yeah. yeah. Me too. Um, but anyways, why am I saying that? Is because if you tend to be always thinking, analytical, this and that, do a right brain activity to quiet yourself. You know, like Sharon, what she does is she plays music. And that music allows the right brain to start sparking and, and it opens something up. So it allows you to, to, to quiet your heart yeah. and quiet your mind. You know, you can maybe, maybe you commute to work and, and you just play some music, play some worship music or something slow, something really low mm -hmm. and, and begin to worship. And that allows you to quiet yourself. Because yeah. quieting yourself doesn't necessarily mean quiet. It could, it, maybe music helps you. Mm -hmm. Maybe if it's not, there's people that have those things on their on their bedside where you hear ocean, yeah. ocean waves, or birds, or, or things like that, or nature. If you live out in nature, go take a walk people away from like your to house. Go take a walk, yeah. Yeah, go find you know a, a, a running trail or a bike trail or, or a nearby park or, or go cycling or yeah, just little things. You that's know? why I love I love cycling because when I cycle, it just shuts everything out. The only thing I'm hearing is that wind, and I'm hearing my my tires on the pavement and that little clicking on the freeway on the black on the, in the back tire and and that helps me just to kind of zone out you know um so when i cycle it doesn't help me just physically it helps me mentally because it yeah. just helps me just to kind of reset yeah i like photography you know yeah. and i like capturing god's nature and i just love to just sit there and just watch and people be like oh why are you just staring at the mountains mm -hmm. i just if I see a bird passing over a hill or something, it's yeah. just beautiful to me. And I just, I just love capturing that one moment because that bird will never pass over them, mm -hmm. that hill the same way it just did. And it just captivates my heart, you know, and I just sit there and I just talk to God when I do. So you just, it's just those moments yeah. um, that it just, it just takes these, your yeah. heart to a different place. And, and these are ideas on how to quiet yourself. Yeah. You you know what quiets yourself, you know. For some, it's it's swimming. Yeah. For some, it's even maybe it's cleaning the house. Maybe cooking. it's cooking. Cooking. That's you know? that's a moment for me too when yeah. I do my baking and my cooking. Well, you just allow yourself to yeah. just quiet quiet yourself so you can spend time with God. And these are just ideas yeah. on quieting yourself. Um, now, the last thing I wanted to talk about is Ezekiel fourteen four. Ezekiel 14.4 says this. You know what's funny? Is we're talking about quieting ourselves and the gardeners are really loud outside. <laughs> so we're quieting ourselves through all of that. <laughs> it's funny, right? Because it's, mm -hmm. it's a good... Uh, it's a good practice. Yeah, it is. It's mm -hmm. a good practice. Ezekiel 14.4 is, is, is an interesting verse. And then I'll explain why. Okay. You got it? Mm -hmm. Ezekiel 14, 4 says this. It says, um, Therefore speak to them and say to them, Thus says the Lord. So God said this to Ezekiel to tell the people. He goes, Everyone of the house of Israel who sets up his idols in his heart and puts before him what causes him to stumble into iniquity and then comes to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him who comes according to the multitude of his idols that I may seize the house of Israel by their heart, because they are all estranged from me by their idols. Mm -hmm. So what was happening was the people of Israel, they were coming to God, but they had idols in their heart. So that lets us know, we don't have to have an idol to worship, a big statue, we can have idols in our heart. Yeah. What's an idol? An idol is anything that's exalted above God. You're like, oh, I thought an idol just meant a statue. No. If you are making your built, 
It's the patio, honey. Just go yeah? ahead. I can hear you. They can hear you. You sure? Yeah. Just go ahead. Okay. It, it would be like me idolizing you, you know, like my husband, right? Yeah. Well, no, this is what I mean I, when I say this. Is a lot of times we come to God with our situation, mm -hmm. and we make that situation bigger than our God. Like a situation I had with you, maybe? Any situation. Okay. Most people's prayers come to God for a situation, but that situation is this huge mountain, and you're trying to talk to God on the other side of that mountain. So you are basically making an idol of your situation, of your struggle, or whatever it is. Whatever it is, you're making it bigger than God. So in other words, Can you give me, give an, idol, an, an idol is anything that's exalted above God. So give, give, give me an It could an be example. an addiction. It could be alcoholism. It can be your marriage that's falling apart. It can be your career you're losing. It can be your health. It can be anything that you put bigger than God. So you think that that, that is something that God cannot, that something that God cannot handle? And you think that it's too big for God to take care of? Yeah. Okay. You're making that situation bigger than bigger God. Bigger than, than something God so, can take care of. So why do I say that in this? Watch. Let me see that pillow. I'm show you an example. Okay. Imagine this pillow is a situation. Whatever situation you're going through. Maybe. Is it blurry? No. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Yeah, it was. Okay. So imagine you're God. You're Jesus. And I'm trying to... You kicked it. Oh, sorry. And... Um, you're Jesus, and I'm trying to quiet myself to talk to you. Okay. And I want to talk to you about um, what's an everyday thing people struggle with. Because I don't want to over-exaggerate the, the problem. Overeating. Yeah, overeating. Wow, that's a good one. Okay, so overeating to me. So let's say this thing is impossible. I can't deal with it. I can't. This whole thing represents overeating. So here's the problem. This is how you make it an idol. You're eating the wrong things. Because I'm trying to, you can't change it in the middle okay, of my thing. Okay, overeating. You can't overeating. switch it up on me. <laughs> what the heck? Overeating. <laughs> so this is what the situation is. So instead of me talking to you about it, I've made it an idol in my heart. Okay. So now this is what happens. So now I'm talking to you through that problem. And in order for me to talk to you through that problem, I'm making you smaller than this problem because this thing is so huge. I can't even, I can't even see you. So all I see is this problem. And by doing that, I've made it an idol because anything we make bigger than God is an idol. Okay. Okay. So if we do that, we're not going to be able to properly hear back. Because remember, we're trying to hear the spontaneous voice of God. I'm trying to quiet myself. But if the situation is bigger than God then I'm only going to see that situation only. And I'm going to get back wrong answers. I, or I'm going to get an answer that I already know I want. You know, that's like uh, somebody, this is an exaggerated way, but somebody saying, and it's exaggerated, but this happens. If somebody in the church is single, and they want somebody else's spouse. Mm. Okay. And let's say that person's spouse the one you're looking at, let's say they're having a hard time in their marriage. So you're like, oh, okay. So now you approach God and say, God, um, I think you're leading me to this person. This person is having a horrible time with their spouse. So I think you're leading me to that person so that person can be with me. God, give me an answer about this. And, okay, so... You already know what you want, but the very fact is, you know, you're getting things twisted because by knowing scripture, you know that that is not a person for you. God's not going to give you somebody else's spouse, right? Mm -hmm. But if you keep bugging God about it enough, you're going to convince yourself that God, you know, you're going to start to see signs. You're going to be like, you know, Lord, if, if, if that person is meant for me, then they're going to get in another argument. With, of course it's going to happen. So you start looking at that situation and letting the situation dictate what you think God is saying rather than making that situation, okay? Let's say that the, the, what you said, the eating thing, is this mm -hmm. big thing. No, I'm not going to make it an idol. I'm going to make it an issue. Okay? So, so how do they remove that? 
how do they remove it? Mm -hmm. Is by realizing that Jesus is bigger than any problem. Jesus is bigger than any situation. Jesus is bigger than any, any addiction. Jesus is bigger than any health problem. He is the one that's bigger. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to say, um, Lord, uh, Talk to me about this big problem here. No. Lord, let's, so for, for like a person. It's who, like, let's talk about this small issue here, Lord. Now I can see you. Yeah. The pillow was in the way, but now I can see you. So for a person who, who doesn't, so for a person who doesn't know how to make that into a smaller issue, how would they, you know, how would they acknowledge that and make that a smaller from that? To I think a it's a conscious issue? thing. I think it's a conscious thing of, of just you got to you got to know that God is bigger than anything. Mm -hmm. If you don't realize that you're going to fall into problems. And even if you do learn to hear that spontaneous voice, even if you do know how to quiet yourself, um, if you don't realize that God is the bigger thing, then you're going to have issues. So you got to you got to make up in your mind right now and say, Lord, Forgive me if I have ever made my problems bigger than you. I repent of those problems. Just pray right now. Say, I, I repent. Yeah, I, I repent yeah. and I will never do it again. I will never make my bills bigger than you. I will never make my marriage bigger than you. I will never make the problems my kids give me bigger than you. I will never make my health problems bigger than you. You are the biggest thing because you are God. So God, I'm not going to approach you with these mountains because they're not mountains. Because from your point of view, they're issues. So now speak into my issues. Yes. How do I deal with this issue? How do I deal with this? Because then he'll begin, then you can hear that spontaneous voice, you quiet yourself, and he just speaks. I've always said, there's these few words that I've always say, let go and let God. Yeah. Just let go and let God. Those, if you remember to just let go and let God, that means that you're just letting go and letting God do what he needs to do. And then you can learn to quiet yourself and be still. Because mm -hmm. if, you know, if you're able to do that, you can just let go and let him do what he needs to do. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, key number one is spontaneous. Yeah. Key number two is quiet yourself, which is funny because this is probably the loudest video we've ever done. <laughs> we, they usually come in the morning, you yeah. guys, okay? The fact <laughs> is this, is that the enemy's a liar. And Amen. he wants to distract, and he wants to distract me, and he wants to distract Sharon, wants to distract you from listening, you know, because it, it, things like that, it, it's just too much of a coincidence that the fact that we're talking about quieting ourselves, and it was just super loud here, <laughs> you know. Um, but key number one is spontaneous. Key number two is quieting yourself. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about vision. and um, Something's going to go dark in you. <laughs> and, and then fourth is, is journaling, guys. So I really pray that, that you were able to receive something. Quiet the external. Quiet the internal. Spend time with God. Amen. Do a right brain activity if you tend to be left brain. Do a right brain activity. Play some music. Do something. Go for a walk. Go for a bike ride. Do whatever it takes. Do yard work. Whatever it takes for you to quiet yourself and spend time with God. So you can allow that spontaneous voice to just flow through you. Amen. You know, and... Um, I think that's it for this video. Amen, yes. So we'll see you tomorrow. We look forward to it. We're really excited about this, guys. Please comment. I love the comments that you wrote for yesterday's. Um, and we look forward to it because it for helps us. For yesterday's. Yesterday's video, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And um, that way it, it helps us because we're going to continue to teach this. So you might give a suggestion that we hadn't thought about because this is something that every once in a while I'll teach the church or I teach... You know, I do little seminars and stuff like that. And I think this is a really important one that it's actually helping me fine tune it by even teaching it to you guys through YouTube. Because YouTube, I have to really think it because I, if I have you in the church, I can bog you down for two hours. And we can question and answer. Yeah. And we can go and, back and forth. And this helps us tighten things up. Yeah. So, all right, guys, uh, have a good day. God bless you. Love you. Bye, everyone. And please comment. Even if you never have, let this be the first time you comment. Thank you. God bless. See you later.